So this is a video on um, Section 1, Unit 1. Um, in this video, uh, we are, so first let me show you guys this. This is the calendar. So we will have a quiz on Friday. Next week we're going to have a pretest from the county, and then we're going to do a mock on Algebra 1. And then if you can see, about three weeks out, we're going to have a test. Um, so this is kind of the unit. Everybody should have the unit calendar. Um, hopefully there won't be any changes made to it, but if so, um, I will let you guys know. So these are the concepts that we're going to be covering in this unit, um, or in this section, actually. Um, so we're going to talk about these I can statements. I know and can apply the definitions of point, line, plane, covalinear point, coplanar point, line segment, ray, opposite rays, distance, length, congruent segments between midpoint and bisect. So now, let's talk about these uh, definitions. So the first one here is point. Point has no dimension and it's represented by a dot. So if we were to talk about point A, we're going to have literally a point like this, and it's going to be labeled A. So that's point A. Next definition is a line. It has one dimension. It's represented by a line with two arrowheads, but it extends without end. So if we were to see this in a drawing, this would be what we would be seeing. This is line AB. And when we talk about the mathematical notation for a line, it's going to be AB with a line with arrows on either end of it that represent that. So that's a line. Then we've got a plane. A plane is two-dimensional. It's represented by a shape that looks like a floor or a wall, but it extends without end. So this would be like a sheet of paper. So that's the kind of thing I'm going to draw, something that looks like a sheet of paper. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. So up here when we do this line and undergo, obviously point A and point B up here are collinear points because they are on the same line. When we talk about coplanar points, we're talking about points that are on the same plane. So in this plane that we drew up here, if we draw three points like this, and we label them A, B, and C, then those three points, A, B, and C, are coplanar because they are on the same plane. Now let's look at a drawing here and see if we can kind of talk through this to determine what things um, are in this drawing. Give two other names for line PQ and for plane R. So if we're looking at line PQ, here's our Q right here and here's our Q. So this is the line that we're talking about. So two ways, that, two other ways that we could talk, we could represent this line are just to flip the letters first of all. So we could say QP. And then also, um, if you notice, up here, we have this letter N up here. So we could also call this line N. So we could say QP, and we could also say line N. Those are two different ways we could represent the line PQ. The next thing on here is um, give two other names for plane R. Well, plane R, again, if you notice down here, um, we have this point R, and there's no point next to it, so it is representing that plane. Now, when we talk about how to name a plane, we need to name a plane with uh, at least one point that's not collinear with other points. So, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could talk about point S, P, and V. Two of those points are on the same line, but one is not. Or we could say S, T, and V. Again, two of those points, S and T, are on the same line, but the third one is not. Or a third way is we could say P, T, and V. Now notice, all three of those have D in them because two of the points were on the line, but the third one was not. So again, when we're talking about this, we are talking about um, three points, and one of those, two of those points can be on the same line, but the third one has to be off of that line. Then when we talk about name three points that are collinear. So again, we're looking for three points that are on the same line. And as you should notice here, we have point S, point P, and point T, and those three points are on the same line. The next concept on here is to name four points that are coplanar. Well, 
that would be four points that are on that green sheet of paper. So we do have three of them already marked, S, T, and P, and for our fourth one would be B. Those are the four points that are on that piece of paper, which represents a plane. So now, you try. So this first question says give two other names for line ST. And when we look at line ST, it's this line right here. So, two other ways we could name that. There's actually multiple other ways we could name that. We could obviously flip the letters TS, but we could also name this SP or PS. So, um, or TP or PT. Still the same line. Our last way would be line M. So there are multiple ways to, to name this line. Just two points that are on that line. Um, any, of, any two points that are on that line. Then name a point that's not coplanar with points Q, S, and T. Okay. So I want to show you something here when we do this problem. So if you notice, Q is here. It's on this line right here. And S and T are on this line right here. So those two lines could form, I could put them on a different sheet of paper that would be almost a vertical sheet of paper. And when I did that, then that meant the only point that's not on those two is point B. So again, let me show you what I mean by that. So if I had a sheet of paper, I could draw two lines on that sheet of paper, and that would be another plane. Now the one thing that's not on those Two lines is that point V. So that's the point that is not um, coplanar with Q, S, and T. All right, so let's talk about what a line segment is. Now, a line segment is part of a line, okay? So it consists of endpoints, two points called the endpoints. So we've got a line segment here. So we've got our two endpoints here, A and B. Now, when we write, again, the mathematical notation for in line segment, we're going to put AB like this, and we're just going to put a segment symbol over the top of it. So it's different because it doesn't have arrows on either end of it. Ray. A ray consists of an endpoint and then an arrow because it goes in a direction. So we have ray AB here, and that would be written like this. AB has a starting point. Our starting point is where the dot is. And then the arrow, so it does have a direction. Now I could draw another ray here, and we could call this one AC. So this one will be AC. Again, it still starts at A, and it goes to C. So the arrow, the direction of the arrow has nothing to do with the drawing. It has to do with where does it start and where does it extend to. Opposite rays. You notice up here that when I drew this, we have ray AB here, and we have ray AC here. Those are indeed opposite rays. They have the same endpoints going in opposite directions. All right, now let's work through this problem. So it says name the segments rays and opposite rays. So give another name for segment GH. Now I know this is a segment again because it doesn't have the arrows on it. This would just be again flipping the letters. So this would be HG. Has endpoints H and G. The next one says name all the rays with endpoint J and which of these rays are opposite rays. So if it has an endpoint J, so that means this is where we're going to be our starting point. And then we're going to go out this direction, that would be JE, this will be JG, this will be JF, this will be JH. Then if we talk about which rays are opposite rays, obviously we have JE here and the one that goes in the opposite direction, same starting point J is JF. Up here, we have JH and JG. So those are our opposite rays. Now, um, it says give another name for EF. Again, EF is going to be FE. This is a segment, segment EF, because again, it doesn't have arrows over it, it just has a segment symbol. So, are HJ, ray HJ, and ray JH the same ray? So I want you to watch here. First of all, let's talk about ray HJ. So ray HJ starts at H, goes through J, and continues on. Then we have this other ray, 
called JH. JH starts at J and goes through H. So if they were the same ray, they would have the same starting point and they would go in the same direction. Well, neither one of those conditions is true for this one. They do not have the same starting point, nor do they go in the same direction. Second question here, are H and J, HJ and HG the same ray? So let's look at this one. So HJ is right here, and it goes out that way. And then HG starts at H again and goes out that way. They are indeed the same ray. The reason they are the same ray is because they have the same starting point and they go in the same direction. Really important that you guys keep in mind that when you are doing these problems, um, if it says explain, you need to give us an explanation there. And we're trying to prepare you guys for when you take EOCs, where you have, and even on tests and quizzes, when you have to explain why you did what you did, how did you get to that answer? All right, so this next one says intersection. The intersection of two or more geometric figures is a set of points that the figures have in common. So when we have line M here intersect line N, the way that those two lines intersect is a point. When we have these two planes over here on the right that intersect, they intersect with a line. So those are just the points of the intersection. When we have two lines or two planes that intersect, they always intersect as a line. So these are two new terms for you guys, postulate and theorem. A postulate is something that we can say without proof. Like for example, when that, what we just did, when we have two lines that intersect, they intersect at a point. A theorem is a rule that had to be proved. So some uh, brainiac at some point um, went out there and proved every theorem that we're going to use this year, somebody went out there and proved it. Um, and basically that means, a, that means a mathematical process that they went through to prove that something was true. So um, the next one is coordinate, a real number that corresponds to a point. So we either have a number line here. So for example, we got something like this, we'll say. And if we said point A right here, we can say that the coordinate for that point is negative 3. Now, the other representation of this is a coordinate plane. And I know you guys are used to seeing these from last year and previous years. So we have the x-axis and the y-axis. And if we went ahead and plotted the point right here, the coordinates of this point would be 1, sorry. The coordinates of this point would be 1, comma 1. The x value is 1 and the y value is 1. So that's what we mean by coordinate. Now, when we talk about a segment, a segment is part of a line, okay? So when we talk about, we talked about this already, we're going to review it again. So um, again, we've got endpoints here, A and B. This is represented in segment A, B, like that, with the segment symbol over it. Now, when we talk about distance and length, they're essentially the same. When we talk about the distance between a point or the length of a uh, uh, segment, we're talking about literally the measurement, okay? So when we talk about something like this, we have something on the number lines, so we got negative 3 here to 0 and 3. So if we said this was A and this was B, we could literally count those. 1, 2, 3 from negative 3 to 0, and then 4, 5, 6 from 0 to 3. So that would be that segment length or distance would be 3. Now the other way that we do this is with a coordinate plane. And you guys should remember this from last year. So if we have two points like this, A and B, then we would use the distance formula with our coordinate points, x1, y1, x2, y2, to find the length or distance from point A to point B. Between. So I'm going to give you guys an example of what this term between means. So um, I... Yeah, I'm going to get to you this way. So, um, my triple mill is between my house and Archer High School. Now, in your mind, you should have been able to picture that triple mill is between my house and Archer High School. But what does that mean? So, that means that somewhere between the end point of my house and, and Archer High School is triple mill. However, that does not tell you exactly where 
that point is. So I'm just going to put it somewhere between my two endpoints. That's what between means. When I talk about congruent segments, those are segments that have the same length. Now I know they have the same length, but I don't know what that length is. So that's what congruent means. We're going to get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. And then midpoint. Midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So if I told y'all Triple Mill is at the midpoint between my house and the school, then you should be able to tell me that the distance from my house to Triple Mill is the same as the distance from Triple Mill to the school. Bisect. Divide something into two congruent parts. So if you have a um, ruler, and it's a 12-inch ruler, and I tell you to bisect it, that means you are going to cut it into two equal parts. Um, and so that will be six inches and six inches. When we talk about a segment bisector, this is something, uh, it could be a ray, a segment, or a line that bisects a segment into two different parts. And those two parts, again, because it says segment bisector, are the same length. All right, finding the length of a segment. The distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. The distance between points A and B is called the length. All right, so let's talk through this now. Um, so if the coordinates of point A is little a, and the coordinate of point B is little b down here, then for us to find the value, now remember this, distance and length are negative, never negative. So we're always going to take the opposite value. And I want you to also notice that we're going to subtract the values here. So it doesn't matter the order. We could subtract A from B or B from A. But either way, the distance is going to be positive. So we're going to make sure that we take the absolute value of whatever we get whenever we do this. So let's go ahead and do this with a problem here now. So the first problem here uh, is DC. So we got point D here, right here, and it's 4.5. So we're going to take the absolute value of 4.5, and we're going to subtract from it our C, which is 2. So when we do that, we're taking the absolute value of 2.5, because that is what 4.5 our cubit is, and that's 2.5. Now our second problem here is EF. Now again, we're taking the absolute value of what we get here. Now this one's a little different, because E is negative 4, so we're going to put our negative 4 here. But then again, remember, we are subtracting. And this time our F is a negative 1. So when we do negative 4 minus a minus 1, that's really plus 1, isn't it? Remember, we're going to change those two negatives into a positive. So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And then the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So again, I want you guys to recall that when we take the absolute value of any number, it gives us a positive number. Our last one here is FD. So F is negative 1, and D is 4.5. And again, remember that negative 1 minus 4.5, if we have the same sign in front of these, it just means we're combining them, and we're going to keep the sign. So negative 1 minus 4.5 is negative 5.5. And again, we're going to take the absolute value of that number because distance or length is always positive. All right, so this next term. So when we talk about congruent segments, congruent segments are segments that have the same length. In the diagram, we can see here that PQ is congruent with RS. And the way we know this, or do y'all notice these tick marks down here? This is really, really, really important. Anytime you see tick marks like this in a drawing, it is telling you that those two segments are the same length. So it says in the diagram that PQ is, segment PQ is equal to segment RS, so you can write PQ is congruent to RS. So that is the symbol congruent. That's what this is right here. This is a new symbol for most of y'all. So that is read as segment PQ is congruent to segment RS. The tick marks tell us that those two segments are the same length. And you're going to see this a lot this year in various different drawings. All right, so the next thing here is in order for you to say that a point B is between two points A and C, three points must lie on the same line, and AB plus BC is equal to AC. So let's talk about what this really looks like. So we've got AB here, and I'm going to give it a value of 3. And we've got BC over here, and I'm going to give it a value of 5. So if you notice here, if I'm trying to find the length of the whole thing, don't I just add those two parts together? So I add AB to BC, and I get AC. 
So 3 plus 5 is 8, so the length of AC is 8. So I like to show this with numbers because people tend to get things better with numbers than when I just use letters. All right, formal definition, between. Given three points A, B, and C, B is between A and C if and only if all three points of the line lay, lie on the same line, and does A, B plus B, C equal A, C? So now we're going to do this next problem. It says here that B is between A and C. A, C is equal to 14. B, C equals 11.4. What postulate is used to solve this problem? So that's the first question we're going to answer. What postulate is used? That is the segment addition postulate. And we're going to keep going over and over this until you guys get this down. So I want you to write this down in your paper, segment addition postulate. Now what we're going to do is draw this. So it says B is between A and C. So I'm going to draw my endpoints first, A and C. And then I'm going to put B on that segment somewhere. So it doesn't really matter where I put it. Okay. So I got point, endpoint A and endpoint C, and I'm going to put B somewhere in between them. Then I'm going to start labeling things. This says that AC, the whole length of this segment, is 14. So I'm going to label the whole length. And then it says BC is 11.4. So I'm going to label that part. Now you should be able to see that part plus part is going to equal the whole. So we're going to write a, a mathematical statement here. We're going to say AB plus BC equals AC. Then we're going to substitute the values that we have. We don't have a value for AB. We see that BC is 11.4 and we see that AC is 14. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of this 11.4. Remember, the way that we get rid of something on one side of the um, equal sign and move it to the other is to do the opposite operation. So here we have a plus in front of 11.4, so we're going to subtract the 11.4. So we're going to subtract 11.4 from 14, and that gives us 2.6. Now I want you to watch what I do, because I'm going to put this 2.6 back up here. So now what you should be able to see is we can check to see if this answer is right because we can add together the 2.6 and the 11.4 and they should equal 14. And if they do not, then we did not do the problem the correct way. Here's our next one. This one's already drawn for us. It says M is between N and O. What is the postulate used to solve the problem? Then find MO and NO. So in this one again, we're going to use the segment addition postulate. I need you guys to practice writing that down. All right, now, again, we're going to add part plus part, and we're going to set it equal to the whole. So we're going to do NO plus MO equals MO. We're going to plug in the values for each of those parts. Now, if you recall back from Algebra 1, we're going to combine our like terms here. So we're going to combine the 17 and the negative 5 on the left of the equal sign. That's going to give us 3x plus 12 equals 5x plus 2. Now at this point you have a couple choices to make. Um, you need to get your like terms on the, uh, on the same side of the equal sign. So we need to get the x's all on one side, the variable. We need to get the constants on the one side of the equal sign. So what I'm going to do is subtract the 3x from both sides, and then I'm going to subtract the 2 from both sides. So when I do that I get 10 equals 2x. Now remember, this operation here, 2x, is multiplication, and the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. So our x is going to be equal to 5. Now, key here again is this is not the answer, because the question is asking me to find mo and no. So I need to plug that 5 back up into the equations. So the equation for mo is 3x minus 5, so that's 3 times 5. That's 15 minus 5, so that's 10. So now we know that this value is 10. So right now we can look at NO plus MO is 17 plus 10. That should equal 27. So the question is, when I look for NO, am I going to get 27? So down here, NO is 5x plus 2. So we're going to do 5 times 5 plus 2. That's 25 plus 2. That's 27. Notice again that we can check this by adding... Um, NM plus MO, that's 17 plus 10, that equals 27, and NO equals 27. All right, so example 4C. Using the segment addition postulate, again, point S is between R and T on RT. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to um, draw this. Point R, these are my endpoints. Point T, 
And then I'm going to put S somewhere in between here. I don't know where really, so I'm just going to stick it up there. So it says then that RS is 2X minus 8. Very important that you guys get accustomed to labeling these. And ST is 3X minus 10. And then the whole length RT is 17. So again, when we do our math here, we're going to do RS. We do part plus part equals the whole thing. So we're going to do RS. And again, we're using the segment addition postulate. And then once we find, once we solve for our X here, we're going to plug that X back in. And we're going to um, tell what the lengths of RS and ST are. So we got RS plus ST equals RT. Plugging our values in. Going to combine like terms this time. So we've got the 2x and the 3x on the left side equal sign. Going to combine those. That'll be 5x. Negative 8 and negative 10. That's going to be negative 18. Then we're going to add the 18 to both sides because we need to get rid of it. So 5x equals 35. So we're going to divide both sides by 5. So our x is going to equal 7. Now again, I need you guys to notice this is the answer. The answer means we're going to plug that stuff back in. Okay, so we're going to use our segment addition process. We're going to plug that X back in to RS. So we're going to do 2 times 7 minus 8. That's 14 minus 8. That's 6. So RS is 6. Then we have 3X minus 10. That's 3 times 7 minus 10. That's 21 minus 10. That's 11. So going back here to our drawing again. Let me go back here. So that means when we solve for our S, this was 6 right here, and this was 11. What was the total length? 6 plus 11. And what is 6 plus 11? It's 17. So we can, again, check our answer down here by comparing RS plus, R, RS plus ST, which is 6 plus 11. 6 plus 11 is 17, and RT is 17. So we checked our answer out and it was correct. So now I want you guys to do this check it out example 4a. So this one's already written for you. So again, we're going to use the segment addition postulate. We're going to add RS to ST and set it equal to RT. So we're going to do 2x plus 7 plus 28 equals 4x. We're going to combine our like terms on the left. So 7 plus 28 is 35. Going to subtract the 2x from both sides. And then we're going to divide both sides by that 2. So here again, we have 17.5. So we're going to plug that back up in there. Um, and we're going to see what we get for RT. 4 times 17.5 is 70. So the answer to this part right here is 70. So what we need to do now is make sure that when we add RS to ST, it adds up to be 70. So when we get 17.5 times 2, that's 35 plus 7, that equals 42. When we add 42 to 28, that does equal 70. So again, I'm going to remind you guys, you can check all of these problems, so make sure you do that. Example 4b, using the segment addition postulate. N is between M and P, so we're going to draw this again. So we got M and P are our endpoints, M and P and n is between them. Again, we don't know where, but we're just going to stick it up there somewhere, and we're going to start labeling what we have. So mn, it says, is 17, and p is 3y, and the whole length, sorry about that, the whole length of this is 5y plus 9. So, here again, we're going to add part plus part and set it equal to the whole. So, using the segment addition postulate, mn plus np equals mp, 17 plus 3y equals 5y plus 9. I'm going to get all our variables on one side, all our constants on the other. going to divide by 2, so y is equal to 4. So now, we're going to plug that 4 back in to the problem. So, um, we're going to plug it in for NP, so 4 times 3, or 3 times 4 is 12. And then we're also going to plug it in for MP, and that's going to be 5 times 4 plus 9, that's 20 plus 9 is 29. Now, 
what we want to do is go back and look at this problem here. So remember again, we got 12 here, and we got 29 up here. So is 7 plus 12 29? It is indeed. So this is the correct answer. All right, two more terms we need to cover. Midpoint, this is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments, and bisect, that means we're dividing into two congruent parts. So the midpoint of AB is the point that bisects or divides the segment into two congruent parts, or two congruent segments, sorry. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM and MB, AM equals MB. So if AB is equal to six, then AM is equal to three, and MB is equal to three. So what do I mean by that? So let's go ahead and draw this. We got AB here, right? And it says if M is the midpoint, now remember that tick mark thing that we talked about earlier? So I can put a tick mark here and a tick mark here. And when I do that, if the whole thing is six, then each of these obviously has to be three and three. Hopefully that makes sense. A segment bisector is any ray line or segment um, that intersects a segment into at its midpoint, which divides the segment into two equal parts. All right, so now let's look here at this problem. It says S is the midpoint of RT, RS equals negative 2x, and ST equals negative 3x minus 2. What definition postulate are used to solve this problem? So the, the very first thing I notice is this term right here, midpoint. So if S is the midpoint, then that tells me that this segment RS and this segment ST are congruent because the midpoint means it cut those two points, those two, that segment into two equal parts. So the definition that we, we're, we're going to say here is that it was midpoint, okay? So we use the midpoint. And then we're still using the segment addition postulate here to solve this problem. So So now, if we know that these two parts are equal, can't we set them equal? And the answer to that is yes. Our S does equal ST. So we're just going to substitute in our values. So this time, we're going to add the 3X to both sides. And when we do that, we get X equals negative 2. So what is negative 2 times negative 2? Negative 2 times negative 2. That equals 4, doesn't it? And then negative 3 times, sorry, negative 3 times negative 2, that is 6. And 6 minus 2 is also 4. Does 4 equal 4? The answer is yes. So when we're looking at this, we need to take all of that into account. This time, our key term is bisect. D bisects EF. So again, if that term there is used, then I know that this segment ED is congruent with segment EF. And so once again, when I'm solving this problem, I can say that ED is equal to DF. And we're going to use the segment addition postulate. The term this time that is important is bisect. Okay, so we're going to set them equal to each other. We're going to work through the problem. And we get that 15 is equal to 3x. So our answer is x equals 5. Now, once again, this time it's asking us to find D, E, E, F, and D, F. So we need to plug those val that value for X back up in there. 2 times 5 plus 4 is 10 plus 4, that's 14. Now we know that E, F should be the same length if we got the right value for X. So 3 times 5 again minus 1 is 14. And then what is 14 plus 14? That's 28. And that would be the whole length. And again, we use the definition of the midpoint here and the segment addition part. Okay, so the next one is Q bisects PR. PQ is 3Y and PR is 42. So we've got that the whole length here is 42. And it says that PQ, um, that Q bisects PR. So we know that these two lengths are the same. So that means we can, if we got 3Y over here on the left for PQ, we can put 3Y over here for QR. 
And again, we're going to add our part to our part, we can get our whole. Um, now that we know what both parts are. So here, we're going to use the definition of bisect and the addition, segment addition postulate again. So we're going to um, say that PQR is equal to QR. So 3Y is equal to PQ, which is equal to QR. So we can add them two together to get the whole. So 3Y plus 3Y is equal to 42. So that means 6Y is equal to 42. So Y is equal to 7. Here again, remember, we're not looking for Y. We're looking for PQ and QR. So we need to plug those back in there. So um, 3 times 7 is 21, right? QR is also 21 because the two of them are equal. And 21 plus 21 is 42. So we know that we got the right answer. All right, our last one here is 5C. Using the segment addition postulate, the map shows that the route for a race, you are at X, um, 6,000 feet from the first checkpoint, C. So 6,000 feet here from the first checkpoint, C. The second checkpoint, D, is located at the midpoint between C and X, I mean C and Y, the end, the, the end of the race. So it says that D is the midpoint of C, Y. So we know that C, D, and D, Y are the same length. Then it says the total race is three miles. How far apart are the two checkpoints? So the total race is three miles, right? So one of the things I want you to notice here is that these are in different units. We have miles and we have feet. So one of the very first things we're going to have to do in a problem like this is convert. So let's go ahead and convert our miles into feet so that we know what the length of XY is. So that's 15,840 feet. So once we find that, the length of the whole thing, 15,840 feet, that's the whole thing. And we know that this was 6,000. And we know that this and this are congruent. So now we should be able to figure out how long the whole length is. So here we can see that XC plus CY is equal to XY. So we can find out what CY is by doing this and subtracting 6,000 from both sides. So we know that CY is 9840, 9,840 9, feet. Now we also know that CD and DY are the same length. So we should be able to take that length, CY, and just take half of it to find what CD is and what DY are. So that's 4,920 feet. So the checkpoints are 4,920 feet apart. And that's the end of our lesson.